All right. So we're going to go conversation style. We're going to relax tonight. Hopefully it'll be uh, fun. I, I'm really praying that um, God will, will do something awesome in your mind and in your heart tonight. Because we're going to go through the story of God. And I know that you guys have been kind of doing this a little bit. I think Nico even referred to this particular story that we're going to be reading. And he referred to it for a couple minutes. But we're going to dive in a little bit further into this story. And, and what the story of God is, is like a narrative of Bible stories. And this particular one, it's called the test, but I have another title for it because I'm a rebel like that. And uh, we're going to go conversation style. We're just going to see she's not going to pay attention half the time. She'll wave. She'll be in I texted your mom world. and told her you were here. <laughs> just in case. You Mama bear. <laughs> so, but can I tell you, it makes us super, super proud. I know that Pastor Steve and Mary feel the same way. They're actually preaching next door to see a group of young people that take it upon themselves, because you're at the age where you take it upon yourself, to do something with your Monday nights that most people don't do, which is sow your time, sow your, sow your talents, sow your treasures, get in here, rub shoulders with people that are the right people, not perfect, none of us are perfect, but the right people pursuing God, and God is going to bless that. And we as a church are super proud of that, and, and we are so thankful that that. Pastor Chris would just give us the opportunity to share with you guys. So we're going to get into this story. I titled it, Already Yes. Already Yes. So let me, let me read it to you before I read. No. <laughs> so cool, they're talking to me back there. No, I'm good. I'll keep this table. I asked for a higher table. This is fine. Now that they, thanks, babe. This is going to be fun. Squirrel focused. All right. So God gave Abraham a test. Listen to this story. It's found in Genesis chapter 22. I believe it's like verses 1 through 19. We're not going to put them on the screen because this is a narrative of that story. Just kind of a, an easier way to understand that story. It's powerful. God gave Abraham a test. He called out to him, Abraham. Yes, I'm listening. He replied. God said, I want you to take your son Isaac, who you love, up to the top of the mountain and burn him whole as an offering to me. The next morning, Abraham got up early, saddled up his donkey, and chopped some wood for the offering. After everything was ready, Abraham and his son Isaac took two of their servants and set out for the mountain. About three days into their journey, three days into their journey, they saw the mountain in the distance. Abraham told the servants, stay here. Isaac and I are going to the mountain to worship. Then we will come right back. Abraham took the knife and the fire from the servants. And he placed the wood for the sacrifice on Isaac's shoulders. As they were walking up the mountain, Isaac became curious and asked, Father, we have the wood and the fire. But where is the lamb we're going to sacrifice? Abraham told him, God himself will see to the lamb. When they arrived at the top of the mountain, they built an altar and placed the wood on it. They, they're both doing this. Then Abraham tied Isaac up and laid him on the altar over the wood. He took the knife and lifted it up to kill his son as a sacrifice to God. At that moment, the angel of God, capital A, the angel of God shouted to him from heaven, Abraham, Abraham, yes, I'm listening. He replied. The angel said, put down the knife. Don't hurt your son. It's clear that you fear God because you didn't hesitate to give me what you love the most. Then Abraham looked behind him and saw a ram with his horns caught in the brush. He caught the ram and offered it to God as a substitute for his son. So Abraham named that place at the top of the mountain, God sees. God sees. 
Soon after that, God said to Abraham, because you didn't refuse to give me your son who you love, I will bless you greatly. Your family will multiply into millions like the stars in the sky and the sand on the beaches. Your descendants will defeat their enemies on every side. The entire earth will be blessed through your family because you chose to obey me. Then Abraham and Isaac went down the mountain, met up with the servants, and returned home. That's the story. Now, this is as odd as it gets, what I'm about to do. I'm about to retell that story. I'm going to read it exactly again, exactly the same, with emphasis on a few words. Because what I need you to do tonight, and again, it's very odd for, for someone on a platform to read the same thing twice, because the temptation is to sit there and go, wait, I, I just heard that. I, I already, you told me the story. Now what are you going to tell me? No, listen to this story again, and I want you to do something while you're listening. Picture every moment, everything, every word. See it as if it's happening. You ready? Can you do that? Everybody else, can you do that? All right. God gave Abraham a test. He called out to him, Abraham. Yes, I'm listening, he replied. God said, I want you to take your son Isaac, who you love up to the top of the mountain and burn him whole as an offering to me. The next morning, Abraham got up early, saddled up his donkey, and chopped some wood for the offering. After everything was ready, Abraham and his son Isaac took two of the servants and set out to the mountain. About three days into this journey towards a mountain, they saw the mountain in the distance. Three days. Abraham told his servants, stay here. Isaac and I are going to the mountain to worship. And we will be right back. Abraham took the knife, meaning he knew what was going to happen. Although he just said, we will be right back. He took the knife and the fire from the servants, and he placed the wood for the sacrifice on Isaac's shoulders. So Isaac is carrying the wood that he's going to be burned on. They kept fire going for three days. That took effort and work. When they arrived to the top of the mountain, sorry, as they were walking up to the mountain, Isaac became curious, <laughs> as maybe you would. Say, hey, Dad, we got the wood and we got the fire. Where's the lamb? Say, bah, son. <laughs> he didn't say that. We are going. <laughs> Sometimes you need to ad lib. Abraham told him, God himself will see to the lamb. When they arrived at the top of the mountain, they built an altar and placed the wood on it. So they are both working on this altar of sacrifice. Where who will be sacrificed? Isaac. They're both working to set up his deathbed. Then, look at the order that this happens. Then Abraham tied Isaac up and laid him on the altar. A lot of people think he tied him to the altar. The Bible says he tied him up and then laid him at the altar. So he, he is tying his son up, standing up, and the son's like, uh, I thought you said God was going to handle this. Then he lays him down. Then he lifts up a knife. The angel of God shouted over, he over him in heaven, Abraham, Abraham. Yes, I'm listening, he replied. The angel said, put down the knife. And by the way, that angel with a capital A, some say that's the pre-incarnate Jesus. Before Jesus came to earth in the flesh. So it's a, it's a longer study and we're not going to get into that. But that capital A in the Bible means that was deity. That was a God and there's only one God. So it would have to have been either the Father, the Son, or the Holy Spirit, right? So the angel said, put down the knife. Do not hurt your son. It's clear that you fear God because you didn't hesitate to give me what you love most. 
and I could, I'm not even going to go there yet. Then Abraham looked behind him. All this stuff is happening in front of him. He looks behind him, and there's this ram caught by the horns in a brush, in a bush. He then catches that ram, offers it to God as a substitute for his son. And Abraham named that place God Sees. And then comes the blessing. Because you didn't refuse to give me your son who you love, I will bless you, bless you greatly. Your family will multiply into millions like the stars in the sky and the sand on the beaches. Your descendants will defeat their enemies on every side. Why do you think Israel still stands? Because of this promise in a book that was written thousands of years ago, Israel surrounded by a sea and a bunch of enemies. They can't go this way, can't go that way. Israel still stands. I don't want to get into the news, and, but don't believe everything. That's God's country. That's God's land. Pastor Mike was teaching this morning that that's the only land, or actually yesterday, Sunday at Dayland, that's the only land that God made a covenant with. Not a people. He made a covenant with the people. But that is the only dirt on the planet that God made a covenant with the land. Your family will multiply into millions. Your, de your descendants will defeat their enemies on every side. The entire earth, the entire earth, including the USA, will be blessed through your family because you chose to obey me. Then, Abraham and Isaac, we went down the mountain, met up with their servants, and returned home. So, babe, let's talk about it. And I think in us talking about it and expressing what we think about the characters and the story, I think we'll see some interesting things and hopefully gather some truth out of this story. What does this story show you about Abraham? So the first thing I noticed about Abraham in this story and what it showed me was that he was waiting to hear from God. He was, when, when he said Abraham, he said, yes, I'm listening. And this is a paraphrase, if, but if you go into any of the other versions, I was looking at the King, New King James Version, it, it's almost verbatim. He was waiting to hear from God. Another thing that the story shows us is that he's an obedient man. He's unwavering in his strength to please God. Not unwavering strength in his own strength, but the strength that he wants to show his faith to God. He's eager to do the will of God. The, the, the story tells us that he gets up early the next morning. He doesn't wait. He has servants at his beckoning call. And he doesn't wait for the he doesn't wait for the for the servants to do his work. He gets up early himself and he cuts the wood. He gets ready. He's eager to do what God has called him to do. And then he shows us the story shows us that he's confident in the God that he serves. God asked him to do the most difficult thing. And yet he was confident in the God that he serves. Yeah. The chapter right before talks about the promise of Isaac. Mm -hmm. So he had already experienced God's promise. He already experienced the will of God. And now he sees that God puts him to this, to the ultimate test. And he says, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do whatever you say. Because I've already lived in your blessing. I can go into this knowing that you're going to take care of me. Yeah, and you know, as you hear, and that's really good, and as you hear some of these descriptives about these people, look inside. Look at yourself. Start connecting with these characters in this story. When you hear he trusted God, when you hear all these things about Abraham, think about yourself, because that's what this is all about. To think, tell me this hasn't happened to you. Maybe not with your son. But to think, Isaac was the promised child. Abraham was trying to have a boy, a namesake, a legacy. He could not because his wife was barren. She could not have children. So his wife said, here, take your handmaiden, another woman, with permission so you can have your son. Has a son, Ishmael. 
a blessed child, not the promised child. Then in her old age, in his old age, she's broken from her barrenness. Isaac comes around. Finally, the promise of God. Woo, Isaac. Okay, here's what you're going to do with Isaac. Take him to a mountain and burn him whole. But you just promised me. I've been waiting for, I even slept with a lady that I didn't want to sleep with because my, my wife couldn't have, God, do you remember the last 10 years? You remember the last 20 years? You gave me this son. I'm going to do what? Because it sounds beautiful in the Bible. Like, oh, he took him to the mountain and he raised the knife. Abraham, no. Woo, and he stops. Yay. Rainbow. Pretty. They come down. Are you kidding me? If you heard this news about the very thing that God promised you that you've been waiting for. For five years, ten years, twenty years. And then God asks for it. That's the story. That's the faith of Abraham. And still being able to say, you guys stay here. We'll be right back. It makes a difference. What, what was the relationship between God and Abraham like? And I want to hit this one a little bit because I believe God had a special relationship with Abraham. <clears throat> Obviously, he chose Abraham for the lineage blessing. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, right? That's the lineage that we're blessed through. So Abraham is right in there. Abraham, Isaac, a father of many nations. He had a special relationship. But, you know, it's, it's almost like, oh, Abraham had a special relationship. Do you know that God sees you that special? You know what the Bible says that God is not a respecter of persons? God doesn't look at Abraham any with any more favor than he looks at you. It's just obviously Abraham took a pretty incredible step that made God understand his love and obedience to him. So he had obviously a very special relationship. Abraham had faith that he would keep that promise like Anna was saying. But he loved his son. God even said, you decided to give me what you love the most. So he listened to God and his angel, his messenger. Sometimes you're going to hear from God through a messenger or a message. Are you willing to hear God that way? Or are you waiting for God in, you know what, God, you got to speak to me. I want to hear your voice. He's like, "Uh, okay, I gave you the entire Bible. Memorize that. Say it out loud. I used to teach in youth a class that would say, I'm going to teach you to hear God's voice right now, everybody in the room. Really? Yeah, right now you're going to hear God's voice. You ready? Really? Yeah, that easy. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. You just heard God's voice. It came through my vocal cords but it's his word. Anytime you want to hear God's voice, read the Bible. And if you want to hear it in your ears, read it out loud. Read the Bible out loud. And you can never again say, I have never heard God's voice. No, you can hear God's voice by opening the Bible and reading. You want to be like all religious about it? Go read the red letters. (laughs) Or read where it says, God said. Go do a study on God said. And just read those things. And now you're hearing God's voice out loud. I say it flippantly, but the truth is we wait so long for this booming voice from heaven when we've been given all these incredible instructions and all these incredible love letters from God and we're waiting to hear, I love you, my son. Okay, you ready? Here's God. I love you, my son. I love you, my daughter. You're the apple of my eye. There's no one more incredible than you. The angels look at you and go, wow, they got all that? You sacrificed your son for them? (gasps) The Bible says the angels are in awe of us. And we're like, I saw an angel. And they're like, a human. (laughs) It's what the Bible says. Why was Isaac asking about the lamb? You know, I, I'm not, I don't want to stay on that one too long, but it's kind of obvious if you're carrying the wood for your own sacrifice and you see fire, 
I think that that would make anyone kind of curious because you know what you're going to do on the mountain because I'm sure that wasn't the first time that he saw his father worship. Um, but what does it show about Isaac? Isaac trusted his father with a knife, fire, and wood. That's a deadly combination. But he trusted his father. Put yourself in his shoes. Carry your own wood. You don't see it kind of combining. You're like, one plus two is not equaling three here, Dad. So here's a really incredible one. And, babe, I don't know if you want to talk to this one. Um, what, what was Abraham risking in order to obey God in this story? Just off, off the top, or I don't know if you wrote something down about that one, but what, what do you feel like he was risking by going out there and just obeying God? He risked, he risked everything. He risked the promise of the future that God had promised him. He risked, he risked getting up there and not even depending on his own strength. Because as a parent, you, you can't even fathom sacrificing your own kid. Yeah. So he, he risked his own strength. He got up there and he had to say, I'm laying it at the altar. You got to do this because I can't. Yeah. And, and that kind of sacrifice, I, I can't even imagine it. I don't think anybody in here can imagine it. Um, I wouldn't want to have been placed in the same position. I'm glad he asked Abraham because I... I don't know that I would obey to this, to this level. I mean, I'm just going to be honest with you. I'll take the halo off for a minute right. and say, I don't think I would have obeyed this command. I think I would have probably reasoned with it and been like, nah, God's a good God. He wouldn't ask for my son. I mean, can you see that being the normal response? But somehow, this is what God decided to do. Some of you are parents. Some of you in here already have children can't even fathom what that would be like. So he was going to risk the promise because the promise to him was that you were going to be a father of many nations before Isaac was even born. As a matter of fact, he got desperate, and that's why he went to the handmaiden to try to get this whole promise taken care of because you're going to be the father of many nations. Oh, good, Father God, but I don't even have a kid. Oh, but I'm going to have them like the sand of the ocean and like the stars in the sky. Cool. Can you give me one? <laughs> I have a little cynical bone in me that every so often I just look at the Bible that way. Wouldn't you wonder? You'd be the father of many nations, but you don't have a kid yet? I'd be like, I'd be like okay, God. So when? What was he, 80, 90? I don't know how old he, he was. was when? He was 100? When he was born. <laughs> 100? <laughs> Ooh. Ain't going to go into that picture. Anyway. Ooh. I'm sweating. <clears throat> What's the promise that God has given you? What's the promise that God has given you in your career? What's the promise that God has given you for a spouse? What's the promise that God has given you for your life? Are you willing to take that promise, load it up with wood, take it up to the mountain, and say, God, here it is. The promise, the thing that you love the most, even if it's the idea of the thing you love the most. See, the thing is, God will not have us love anything more than Him, even the promise. He, oh, wow. He wants us to love the promise, sir. Him, not the promise. And can I tell you? I have loved the promise before. And maybe you have too. Maybe tonight's your night to say, you know what, God, I think, I think this thing got me. I think, I'm, I think I'm in love with the promise. I think I'm in love with what you have for me. I think I'm in love with what you're going to do for me. Not from a bad heart. You're not sitting here going, sugar daddy, right? <laughs> That's not the point. Unless maybe you are. There was an old Kanye song. No, I'm just I'm not gonna. You guys know it. Come on, sing it. I'm kidding. All right. <laughs> so 
what does this story teach us about God? And I think we're going to close with this because we've got a couple minutes left. What does this story teach us about God? And I'm going to go a little bit here. And if you want to break in, because I know you have some awesome things, and I saw you write some of those things down, so please feel free to break in. First of all, God provides for his people. You, my friends, are God's people. God provides for his people. This is another one of those rainbow ones. Because when the provision isn't coming in here in our house, I'm the first one's like, oh, you provide for your people, huh? Really? I'm the first one. Guys, please be honest and transparent about your life and your mind and your heart and your soul and the things that you think and the things that you're like. I am never going to be perfect. I don't plan to be perfect. I'm just pursuing perfection. Jesus is perfect. But I got to be able to identify those thoughts and be able to tell people, I think stupid too. You know why? Because I shine a light on it. Provide? Where, where's, that, where's that college scholarship that, that I thought I was going to get? Where's the tuition money? Where's dad? Where's mom? And we get it. Where's my husband? My wife. My wife. I, you say that. Where's my husband? Where's my husband? Where's that boyfriend? Where's that guy that God promised? Where's that godly guy that I'm praying for, that I'm believing for? I have a list that details him from head to toe. Where is he? Not you. God answered my prayer. <laughs> that sounded very convicting, like you're still looking. Where is he? Where is that fine woman that I've been looking for? Oh. This is the finest woman I will ever find. Well, after 25 years. See, that's kind of like, I'm here, I got to stay. You got to learn to discern what things mean. After 25 years, I'm not going to go anywhere, right? <laughs> oh, you're the best, honey. I love you. You're making my glasses fog. Okay, get back to the point. Where is the Yeah, promise? we're trying to close. Where oh, is... there, go, there, go, there go the three minutes. <laughs> mm. He provides for his people. Here's an interesting one. What does it say about God? He tests his people. <gasps> Wait, I thought God doesn't test us. Well, he might not test your patience in the way of like exasperating you, but he does test your faith. He'll allow trials and life and all that other junk to hit your life, to see where your faith is at. Right, and just like, just like he, didn't, he didn't take Abraham to a breaking point, just like that, he would never take us to a breaking point either. He would never take our faith to a place where we couldn't respond. It's, it's like the, Pastor Barry sh shared in the hurdles series. If you, if you haven't taken the hurdles series, ladies, you got to take it. The hurdles are set to each racer. So if you're, if, if you're a hurdle jumper or a hurdle lure, I don't know what that's called. If you jump hurdles in a race, it's set to your height. So I'm 5'10". If I were to jump hurdles, my hurdle would be taller than somebody that is five feet tall. And so that's just like our test of faith. It's right. just like our test in life. It's just like the promise. We are going to get there. We're, the test is going to come. The, the faith is going to be put to the test. But God would never take us to the, the place of desperate. Not desperation. That's not the right word. Because we might get desperate. <laughs> right? Yeah. We'll, we'll get there. But we'll never be at the place where, where we won't make it. Right. We might be at the breaking point. And that's okay to get at the, to the breaking point. But we'll never get to the place where we're just like, that's it. Yeah. The Bible says beyond what you can handle. The Bible tells us that. That he will not test you beyond, he will not allow you to be tested beyond what you can bear. That means he knew who he was asking. See, the very next question here is, would you obey God if he asked you to do this? I don't know, answer for yourself. Would you obey God if he asked you to do this? You don't have to say it out loud. But this is a tall order right here. I mean, I, 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 my answer was, I'm glad he asked Abraham. Now, he's asked me to do some things and take some steps and make some jumps. And he's tested my faith and will continue to allow life to come our way 
so that our faith will be tested and stretched just like a muscle will build, so will faith. But I'm not Abraham. He didn't call me to be a father of many nations. He called Abraham to be a father of many nations. He got this test. So the most challenging thing I saw in this story was what do you love the most? Who do you love the most? Are you willing to sacrifice that? Because God will wait until you are. He wants to know that he's first. Very tall order, guys. And he's not asking you to lift up a knife and kill anything. That whole killing sacrifice thing ended a long time ago, and I'll, I'll, I'll explain that in a second. But he is wanting to know that you love him the most. So the title was Already Yes. What's interesting is twice you hear God say, Abraham. The second time he says, Abraham, Abraham. He says it twice. You know what both answers were? Yes, I'm listening. I'm going to say that differently, though. Yes, I'm listening. Abraham, yes, I'm listening. You get it? Do you get it? saw Janela over here. Janela. Yes. I'm listening. Danny. Yes. I'm listening. I'm going to explain it. He was already on yes. It was already yes. Whatever God was going to ask him, he had already said yes. Then I'm listening. You know what we do? Tell me what it is, God. I'll let you know if I'm going to do it. Tell me what you got for me, God. What's the promise? Okay, yes. Yeah, maybe God will do that with you once or twice. But sometimes, sometimes he's just calling your name and doesn't tell you anything else. Ricky. Sally. Maddie. Yes. How about you try this? Just say yes and then ask for the explanation. That is the scariest thing you could ever do, but the most impressive thing you could ever do to God. You know why? Because if you trust God, I can't stay staying, sitting down. Because if you trust God, if you trust God and you want to stretch the way you trust God, then if you say yes, what is God going to do to you to hurt you? What are you worried about saying yes? Armando Gomez, what are you worried about in saying yes? Just yes. Armando, yes. Whatever you got. Yes. I'm listening. Could that make a difference in your life? Fernando. Yes, whatever it is, because I know you're a good God. I know you're only going to steer me in the right direction. I only know you're going to give me things that are good for me. I already know this, so all I need to do is say, yes, I'm listening. Does that make sense? Come on, everybody stand up. I want to close with this, this thought right here. Because all that God is asking us to do, once we say yes, is put the wood on our back, walk towards the mountain, climb it, and then we're going to find the promise. What does all that say? All that says is that even after you said yes, and even though God is great, 
it's not going to be easy. It's not going to be easy. You remember when you were little and your parents used to tell you, nothing worthwhile is ever easy. That is a true statement. I like easy. I like chilling on a Sunday. It's cool. Going home from church, taking a nap. Yay. But nothing worthwhile is going to be easy. It was not easy for Isaac. It was not easy for Abraham to carry his own cross, his own wood, his own fire, what was going to burn him, the thing that's going to take you out, that's what you're going to carry with you. And you're going to be like, oh my gosh, this is going to kill me. This is, this is going to take me out. Everything that I'm carrying right now, I can't carry this, God. God, this is heavy. I'm traveling for three days, Lord. Lord, there's fire. There's a knife. There's wood on my back. What is going on? I got it. I got it. God, my parents can't stop fighting. They're, they're getting a divorce. God, my career is going in the tubes. I thought I wanted to study this. I don't know what I want to study now. I don't know even what I'm going to do. What, who am I, God? What, what? Am I a guy? Am I a girl? All these people say all these different things. I, what am I? What, where, what is, frustration, temptation, and the enemy's always going to be there to whisper something to you. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> you're right. He, he hasn't told you anything, has he? All I do is say your name. Yes, I'm listening. Close your eyes, if you don't mind. Father, I know we go a couple of minutes late here, but God, can you use this mouthpiece today to remind everyone in this room that you love them. You are the God that sees. Can you remind everyone that you see what they're going through? Sometimes it's just for one more week. Sometimes it's just for one more day. Your mercies are new every day. Each morning, God, let them wake up tomorrow with that sense that you are in control. Even if they feel like they are not, sometimes that's a good thing. Let their trust be built. Let their faith be built. I pray and I declare that in this room there are people that are going to move mountains, not only walk towards them. They're going to change life, not only for themselves, but for other people. And their influence and the things that they do on this earth will resound in heaven. And we think the angels are in awe now. They're going to be like, oh, wow, look at what this generation did. They've affected and infected the world for Jesus by letting Jesus take over their life, be in control of their life. Oh, they will do the walking. But God, when they look behind them, they're going to see the sacrifice. They're going to see that you already paid the price. They're going to see that you already shed the blood. You, they're going to see that you're the lamb. You're the one that was put on the cross. You're the one that had to bleed and die so that now we can have a perfect relationship with God because the perfect one already died so that us imperfect ones can be connected with you. God, let this realization be as real as the ground that they're standing on right now, God, that they would see you and they would see everything that you've done to connect with them, God. No longer will they be discouraged and depressed. No longer will they feel unworthy. No longer will they ask questions about themselves. When you designed every bone and every cell and every muscle and their mind, everything, everything that they are, you designed. So I bind the enemy of confusion in Jesus' name. I bind the enemy that's whispering mean and evil thoughts. Let us hear your word, God. Let them hunger for you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Hope you were blessed today.